Good morning, guys. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. I'm Wimburn. You're watching Barham Engines. So, yeah, as you can see, guys, I'm a little bit red. Um, we had the Lynn Valley Classic down at Lynmouth down by us yesterday. Really big turnout. I think there was over 300 cars in the, in the show. So I took the Lamborghini down. And um, yeah, the weather was absolutely fantastic. If ever you get the chance to go to Linton and Linmouth, um, it's, it's beautiful. Took the Lamborghini down there. It's a lovely drive from Barnstable from where I live. It's only sort of half hour's drive, but the roads are absolutely lovely and there was no traffic at all. As many of you know that are watching this, have been there yesterday. Um, Although the sun was out, the wind was a little bit chilly, so I sort of had a jump on all day. But when I got home, as you can see, a little bit sore. But anyway, so what I'm going to do today, guys, and probably for the rest of this week or the next couple of weeks, maybe, um, I'm going to go a little bit more in-depth to some of the processes that we do. So the last couple of weeks, I've been giving you a sort of run round of the workshop and, uh, and showing you a brief sort of description of some of the processes we're doing. But... I want to sort of go slightly more in depth, not too technical, but just so you guys can sort of see the reasons why we do these processes and, and sort of a little bit more intricate of setting the machines up. Today, I'm just going to do a little one about using our Centronic, um, the Myra Centronic. That is this machine behind me. So this is what we cut the, the valve seats on. Um, now, I have shown you this a couple of times before, but I'm just going to show you a little bit more, slightly more in-depth on, on the process. So we're going to be setting a 20-valve Audi head up on this. We're going to be fitting some Supertech valves, so they're very slightly bigger, um, but standard on these heads. It comes with a straight 45-degree seat, so we're going to be putting a three-face seat on there. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoy right guys so i've cut the exhaust seats on this i'm just about to cut the inlets i just want to quickly show you how basically how this machine works and how we set the tool and why we do it really so basically when we're setting the tool on an existing seat like this what i normally do we'll put in first of all if i show you we've got this cutter here which has got is the three face and this is the three face with the 45 degree center one and a half mil width of the centre seat so you've got 45 in the middle you've got 30 on the top and you've got 60 on the bottom there so what we're going to do on this one you can see it's just a straight 45 and what we want to do is basically centre that the 45 one and a half mil here with the centre of that seat or sort of right on the outer edge so we basically just put in a 30 degree on the very outer edge and then the 60 on the on the bottom you can see here i've done it on the exhaust so you've got a, a very slight 30 on the top and you've got a very very see a very very slight witness of a, a 60 on the bottom we don't want to go too deep so we get more of a 60 because obviously then the valves are going to be pocketed so what we do is obviously we get the, the correct pilot so these are our selected these are our selection of guides. They all go up in about a difference of two thou really from like seven on the seven mils. Then you've got the eight mils. Then over here you've got some more. So this size guide is a six mil. So we found one here that basically what you want. You, want, you don't want something that's too snug that you have to force it down the hole. But you want something with a, as very little play as possible. You need a very, very slight bit of play. So it sort of can because the way this CNC works is it sort of goes forwards and backwards in the X and Y and finds the centre of the hole. So that is absolutely perfect. Then what we do is we clamp it up there with a little grub screw and we just put it down the first hole. So you've got the bed here, which you you adjust up and down by undoing these and winding this handle. And basically you want to set the height. So you're clamping just on the outside of the gasket line here. It's normally a good rule of thumb. And you want it so it's basically dead level with the seat. So the way to tell whether it is, 
is to make sure that that is sort of roughly in the centre of where it's got to be. Then what we do is we put the tool in loosely. You see that is going up and down. So there's a little, there's a screw at the back there that's that does the tool up, clamps it. You just do it up and then slacken it off back very slightly. And then you want to. I'll just get a torch. So you push that down onto the seat. Then you've got another height adjuster here, which if you unscrew that counterclockwise, it lowers the whole head down and you'll see the tool go inwards. And what I'm aiming for is to get that 45 degree right on the top of the seat. So we're going down now. You can see that is sitting flat on the existing seat. So if we wind that up, push that tool down, you can see the top of that one and a half mil 45 is going to cut on the outer edge of the 45 degree seat. And then it's going to give you a little bit of a 60 down the bottom. So we'll go with that. As you can see, you've got a 45 in the middle, you've got a nice 30 on the top, and you've got a 60 on the bottom, and that is absolutely perfect. As you can see guys, all the seats are cut now, we give this head a very light lick over, and that is all ready to put the valve stem seals on, the new valves in, springs and retainers in, and it's all good to go. Right, so next step guys, the last step is to face the valves. As you can see, we've got the 45 degree angle on the head there, and this one has already been faced. So what we do is we use this machine here. This is called a quick way valve refacer. Uh, we have a valve here that has not been faced. So what we do is, first of all, we make sure that this head here is at the right angle. So down here, you've got the, the angles. Um, you've got 45 up the top there. So if we move that out of the way, you see the 45 there. So what we do is make sure that that face is in line with the angle that you want on the valve. So, so there we go, we lock that off. Then here we have a chuck. On the other side we have a stone so the chuck is a it's basically a like a three jaw chuck but it's instead of jaws in there it's got like ball bearings so you pull back this handle and that releases pulls back the, the chuck and releases the ball bearings so we then install the valve stem first into the machine so when you've got the valve sticking out as far as you want it out which is usually about half inch something like that we then put our little bar at the back side and we push the stop up against the valve stem and that ensures every time you put a valve in it always goes to the same the same depth so then what we do is we turn the machine on and you see what happens when you turn the machine on is the stone starts the cutting oil comes out and the valve starts turning so then what we've got to do you've got a handle here that winds the valve in and out and you've also got a lever here which moves the moves the stone forwards and backwards so the idea is to get a decent finish is you want to move you want to basically move the make sure that the valve is going to be in front of the stone pull back the handle, wind 
the valve back into the stone very gradually and you'll see it start to cut. You can hear it and you can see that and what we do is we just wind it back very very slowly moving the stone in and out gradually until you get a good even finish on that valve face. And you also want to make sure the oil is going on the valve face so it doesn't get hot. And you wind it off, pull the stone out of the way, stop the machine and then we take the valve out and check the face. So there we go guys, as you can see, we just got in focus. That valve face looks absolutely perfect. This is also a very, really good way of checking to make sure that the valve is straight and there's no kinks in the stem or the head's bent. Um, but as you can see there, where it's nice and even, that's a perfect valve. So we can then put that in the cylinder head. So there we go, guys. This head is now complete. All we've got to do is put the, valve, put the uh, springs on and the retainers and the collets, and this thing is done. Uh, so... Once we've faced the valves, obviously the seats are done, we put them in without the springs on. We put the vacuum tester on the port uh, with all the valves in and closed and it should go up into the green. If it goes up into the green without the, without the springs on, uh, then you know that they're seating perfectly. The idea of the vacuum tester is if there's any sort of gaps where the valve sits on the seat, it's just going to draw air rather than cause a vacuum um, and, you'll, and it's going to indicate on here so if it's sucking any sort of air it's just not going to register um, up near the green at all so we know then that we've got some sort of issue um, and also the reason we do it without the springs on is because the springs can pull the valve down and give you a false reading really what it's doing is it's, it's literally pulling the, the head into the seat so that's why we always do it with, with no sort of force on there whatsoever. Hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, comment down below, and we'll see you in another video. Cheers.